Well, hello and welcome to Super Great Kids Stories. Wise tales from around the world which will make you laugh and sometimes cry. Recommended from ages 5 to 105. I'm Kim and I love stories. Hello and how are you doing? I hope you've had a good week. The quest tale that we're going to hear today, Nora and the Aki Fruit, is from Jamaica, which is a beautiful island country in the Caribbean Sea. Delicious fruits grow there, and in this story, two sisters go on a quest to pick some ackee fruit. Will they succeed? What do you think? Have you ever picked fruit like apples or strawberries or lemons? See if you can think of a list of fruits which you'd most like to pick while we have a quick word with the adults. Hello, super great kids, it's me again. So, I wonder how long your list of fruits was. Here's an interesting fact for you about the ackee fruit. It can only be picked after it's burst open, a little bit like a conker coming out of its green prickly case. Otherwise, it may well be poisonous. So, you have to be patient and wait until the red and yellow pear-shaped fruit has split open and its seeds are showing, and then you can pick them to eat. This story is good for joining in, and there's a song you can sing, and there's also a magic river. So, you can wag your finger and be like the river telling off one of the sisters. So, have you got your finger ready to wag when the song starts? Ready? Here's Kate Corkery. Mouth open. Story. Jump. Out. This story comes from Jamaica, where the sun shines bright and sometimes the rains fall hard and where many delicious fruits grow. And this story was told to me by my friend Winston. Winston and Zinga, who grew up in Jamaica, in those beautiful blue mountains. In a little house, up on a lonely hillside of the blue mountains, there lived a poor woman with her two daughters. These girls were as different as chalk and cheese. One was very kind, and the other was very mean. One would often smile, while the other preferred to pout and scowl. One day, the mother came back from the market with a, a nice piece of salt fish. She called to her daughters, Girls, get your baskets and go down to the other side of the valley where the ackee trees grow and pick me some nice, ripe ackees. You know, an ackee is a type of very nutritious fruit. It grows in West Africa and lots of Caribbean countries. And although it's a fruit, it must be cooked before eating it. It's not too sweet, not too salty, not too fruity, but it goes really well with tasty codfish. Mm. The girls loved it. It was their favourite meal. But Nora, the mean sister, was not very keen to trudge off down the hill on such a hot day. I don't think the ackees are ripe yet, Mama. And when they're not ripe, they are poisonous and will make us sick. Nonsense, said the mother. I've seen them myself this morning. Their skin is orangey red and their lovely yellowy flesh and black shiny seeds are bursting out, ripe and ready to be picked. Don't waste any more time. Off you go and fill up your baskets so I can cook us a lovely supper. Angel, the kind sister, didn't complain. She just grabbed her basket and off she skipped. Nora was a bit grumpy, but she followed on. In the valley, at the foot of the hill, the girls came to a dry riverbed. They would have to cross here to get over to where the ackee trees grew on the other side. This was no ordinary riverbed. It was a magical place. Sometimes there was water, sometimes there was none. 
the wise riverbed knew who was mean and who was kind. If you are kind, it would allow you to cross over and back as many times as you liked. If you are mean, you could only go one way. Angel crossed first, and Nora crossed second. Then both girls walked to the ackee trees and started picking the ripe fruit. They picked and picked and picked all day until their baskets were full to the brim. Then they put their baskets on their heads and turned to go home. As soon as Angel stepped into the dry riverbed, she heard a voice singing. If you not give me one ackee, you not pass here. If you not give me one ackee, you not pass here. If you not give me one ackee, you not pass here. Dry river, I go come down, wash your way. As soon as the kind sister heard those words, she reached up into her basket, took out a nice ripe ackee, and placed it on the riverbed. Then she crossed safely to the other side. Next, Nora arrived. As soon as she stepped onto the riverbed, the voice was heard again. If you not give me one ackee, you not pass here. If you not give me one ackee, you not pass here. If you not give me one ackee, you not pass here. Dry river, I go come down, wash your way. Nora stood there with her mean face and said, I'm not giving the river one of my ackees. <laughs> Just then, a stream of water started to trickle down the hill. It flowed over the dry riverbed and soon it covered Nora's feet. She stood there, ankle deep in water, and the river sang again. If you not give me one ackee, you not pass here. If you not give me one ackee, you not pass here. If you not give me one ackee, you not pass here. Dry river, I go come down, wash your way. Nora stayed put, with her basket on her head, and her arms folded, and with a mean face she said, I'm not giving the river one of my ackees. <laughs> the water began to rise. Soon it rose as high as Nora's knees. Was Nora frightened? No. She stood there, knee-deep in water, arms folded. She did not budge. Wonder if you can make a mean face and say what Nora said. You ready? I'm not giving the river one of my ackies. <laughs> The river sang its song again. Maybe you can sing along. You might know it by now. If you no give me one ackee, you no pass here. If you no give me one ackee, you no pass here. If you no give me one ackee, you no pass here. Dry river, I go come down, wash your way. The water rose higher and higher. Now it reached up to Nora's waist. Was Nora frightened? No. She stood there, waist deep in water, still with a very mean face, and said again, I'm not giving the river one of my ackees. <laughs> the river sang again. If you not give me one ackee, you not pass here. If you not give me one ackee, you not pass here. If you not give me one ackee, you not pass here. Dry river, I go come down, wash your way. The water kept rising and rising and rising until now it reached up to Nora's armpits. She stood there, armpit deep in water, her basket on her head, her arms folded, and still with her very mean face. Was she frightened now? No. But her kind sister was. Angel called from the other side of the river. Nora. Give one, Nora, give one. Give one, Nora, give one. Give one, Nora, give one. Dry river will go come down, wash away. But Nora just looked back at her kind sister 
put on the meanest face yet and shouted, I'm not giving the river one of my ackies. <laughs> the river sang again. If you no give me one aki, you no pass here. If you no give me one aki, you no pass here. If you no give me one aki, you no pass here. Dry river, I go come down, wash your way. The water rose and rose and rose until it now was as high as Nora's chin. The kind sister sang again, pleading with Nora to be kind. Give one, Nora, give one. Give one, Nora, give one. Give one, Nora, give one. Dry river will go come down, wash your way. Nora looked across at her kind sister and yelled, I'm not giving the river one of my ackies. <laughs> the river sang again. Are you singing with me? If you no give me one aki, you no pass here. If you no give me one aki, you no pass here. If you no give me one aki, you no pass here. Dry river, I go come down, wash you away. And with that, the river rose higher and higher and higher. Nora was now on her tippy toes, water gushing in and out of her mouth. Still, she managed to say. <laughs> which you know by now means, I'm not giving the river one of my ackies. <laughs> well, the river rose and rose and rose and sang for the very last time. If you no give me one aki, you no pass here. If you no give me one aki, you no pass here. If you no give me one aki, you no pass here. Dry river, I go come down, wash you away. With that, a big current of water came and swept Nora away. <gasps> oh, my goodness, I heard you say. What happened to Nora? Let me tell you, Nora did not drown. She was actually a very good swimmer. But what happened to her basket of ackies? Well, they all got tipped over into the water, of course, and got washed away downstream. And what happened then, do you think? Well, straight away the water went back to its normal level for that time of year. In fact, it dried up altogether. The magical river was not mean. How many Akis did it ask for? Just one. How many do you think might have been in Nora's basket? Lots and lots. The river got more than it asked for, and it was more than satisfied. Hmm. Nora wound up with nothing to bring home that day, apart from a song she would never forget, and a lesson she would always remember. It is always better to be kind. Even a little kindness can go a long way. Snip, snap, pout. That story is out. Thanks to Kate Corkery for that. Are you any good at pouting? Go on, give me a good pout. Push your lips out. Yeah, put your hands on your hips and pout. Very good. And now smile. Ah, oh, that's better. I wonder, would you have smiled at the river and shared one of your fruits? Or would you have pouted like Nora? And now it's time da, 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 to take a dip into my bag of happies and thank you for the beautiful pictures and everything you're so generously giving us. Thanks to six-year-old Ray for your picture of the monkey, which was inspired by How the Stars Became. It's a really atmospheric and beautiful picture, Ray. You've got great imagination. Keep doing that drawing. And thanks to Owen, who is six from Pacifica in California, for an enchanting picture of an enormous Tiddalink the Frog looming over an electric eel. And big thanks to sisters Abigail and Mia in Arkansas for your pictures of how the rainbow got into the sky. Thanks, Abigail, for your sunshine. And thanks, Mia, for your picture, which made me feel hot just looking at it with the scorching sun and the brown, dusty air. 
thank goodness for the rainbow which brought the rain. And Charlie in Perth, who is seven, sent us a marvellous jaunty portrait of the leprechaun from the story Molly and the Leprechaun. Thank you, Charlie. It's great. And six-year-old Parker from Driftwood in Texas has sent us a captivating picture of the fish with the golden eyes, inspired by our September bonus story from Russia. I love the way, Parker, that you've thought so carefully about the colours so that the golden eye really stands out. Did you know that there really is a fish with golden eyes in the US and Canada? And Sam, who is seven, from Manhattan in Kansas, has sent in a lovely drawing inspired by the parrot's advice. The parrot looks very sad in his cage, Sam. Thank you for sharing that. I lived in Kansas as an exchange student and I got to know people from all over the world while I was there. So, hurrah for kind people in Kansas who introduced me to different cultures. And Rose, who is five in Denver, sent an enchanting picture of the magic orange tree. I love the way the tree looks magical with all the stars around it, Rose. And I love the fact that you've signed your name with a picture of a rose. Marvellous. More thanks coming next week. You can enjoy all these pictures on our Facebook page, www.facebook.com forward slash super great kids stories. And a big thank you to all our subscribers and sponsors. You make my heart sing. Thanks to Michael, Maraya, and Justin in Rotorua. And to Rich. And to twins Adelie and Eric in Arlington. And to Adeline, Ellie, and Bronwyn. If you'd like to subscribe to our podcast on Apple, click subscribe in Apple Podcasts. Or to support us with Patreon, go to our website on supergreatkidsstories.com and click on the Patreon button. To give a one-off donation of any amount, click on the Ko-fi button on our website. And remember to send us your super great pictures for our drawing competition. We have 10 super great kids stories colouring books to give away to 10 lucky super great kids who send in their pictures before December the 13th. And if you want to see what our colouring books look like, then go to Amazon and search for Super Great Kids Stories Colouring Book or go to our website, supergreatkidsstories.com and follow the links. And any of you interested in Super Great Kids t-shirts, you can find them in our shop on our website. That's it for this week. Next week, we start a new theme of fairy tales from around the world. They may be fairy tales that you're familiar with, but how quickly will you recognise them? Keep telling your stories to anyone who will listen, and I'll see you next week. Thanks for listening. This podcast was produced at Wardour Studios in London. <laughs>